I'm missing a couple people. Um, today, we're just going to, um, if I recall correctly, we just need to finish up a little bit of the last lesson on um, how Jesus redeems us from the, the situation of original sin. And then we're going to um, talk about the seminar questions that I Oh, no, maybe, okay. So, sorry, uh, the seminar questions I gave you um, on Gaudium et Spes uh, 22, and then that will be the last thing for this unit. So what we'll be doing next week is we'll be um, reviewing for the test, and you'll do your first test, which will be a take-home. So let me show you, or you could do it during the time we're in class. It's up to you. Um, so let me show you on Schoology. What the, where did, hang on, what is going on here? Where did all my tabs go? Oh, there they are. Okay, so, um, well you see here, Make sure you turn in your seminar questions after we're done today. Um, did I open up the Dropbox for that? Yeah, it looks like I did. So, um, let's see. So, uh, I have there the test review. And then if you click on this, um, this will take you, and you can actually see the test question already. Um, and the rubric and everything, you get an option of three writing prompts, and you're going to write a, um, a paragraph or two, and we'll review those in class on um, what? Oh, there's Emma um, on the 29th and 30th, and then and then um. On the day of the that the test is due, it's going to be due October second, um, and on the first and the second, we'll just pray, and then you can either have time to work on the test or get help with it if you need help. So there won't be any like lessons or anything new presented on um, the first. The classes on the first or the second, because that again is going to be time to um, work on the test. Uh, asked, there's an internet outage. Oh, okay. So that, that's good. Let's see, Carmen. Where is she? Yeah, um, they said the internet, um, like the internet was like really bad in Davis and Woodland where, and I don't even know where that's at, but, um, oh, yeah, so some people are having trouble today. Um, thank you for letting me know. Uh, okay, so that, it, that's, and even if you click on this little doohickey, oh, there's Chloe. Was she here before? Hey, there she is. Um, this little thing has a link, too. Um, to the test folder. So this tests folder, um, I saw that chat. Okay. Oh, she's in Davis. Yeah. Um, this has all kinds of study materials. So here's the prompt for the test. Um, here's a study guide. And on the study guide, I put links to, um, I guess you have to open it. What? What? It takes forever to open. It's so weird. Maybe I should change that. Anyway, there's a study guide there, and it has links to all the notes and stuff. And um, and also in the in this folder, there's a Kahoot. There's no we didn't, we're not going to have any objective questions on the test, but it, the definitions are in the Kahoot and also the Quizlet for the vocab. Um, that's a list of vocabulary words. Um, no, now it's going to open that. So here's the study guide. Um, 
and like it has links to the Google slides if you need them or like the Aristotle article, the Quizlet, the Kahoot. So that's all there for you um, for your studying needs. Um, okay, so back to this. Um, where are we? Okay, here we go. So for prayer today, Where'd that chat thing go? Oh, yeah. I mean, you have to have a study guide. How are you going to know it's a study? No, no thanks necessary. If you don't have a study guide, how will you study? You got to have a study guide. I just, I wanted to give it to you over the weekend because um, we're, we're not, the test isn't due till the end of next week. But if, if you wanted to study over the weekend, like if you're too busy during the week, like I know, I can't remember who, but I know one of you has like two jobs. Um, so for prayer today, I thought it would be nice for us to pray for Ruth Bader Ginsburg. Um, as you've probably heard, she was um, uh, on the Supreme Court and she recently passed away. And uh, she's a, a great American hero and um, a champion of women's rights. So I thought we should pray for her. And the prayer I chose is the Mourner's uh, Kaddish which is a traditional prayer that's prayed um, for the dead in Judaism because Ruth Bader Ginsburg is Jewish. So um, in the chat, you can put um, other things, other intentions you want to pray for, and we'll um, say the, I'll say the prayer, and then we can watch a little bio of, um, of um, Justice Ginsburg if you don't know who she is. So um, let's begin in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, so, Lord, we're praying in a special way for uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, justice on the Supreme Court, um, and thank her for all her service to our country and all she's done to advance women's rights. Are there any other special intentions? For Tristan's grandpa, Alexis Friend, Natalie says for everybody to have a safe weekend. Um, Elizabeth's sister. Anyone else? Um, we pray for um, the police officers in Los Angeles and St. Louis who um, were recently shot. We pray for all the protesters that they pray they're able to protest. Um, against injustice peacefully um, and we pray for Brianna Taylor and her family and the suffering they've experienced at her death as well. Um, and then Elizabeth's sister, any other special intentions? Okay, for these intentions and all the intentions we hold in the silence of our hearts, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer and here's the um, Kaddish. Glorified and sanctified be God's great name throughout the world, which he's created according to his will. May, may he establish his kingdom in your lifetime during your days with, uh, and within the life of the entire house of Israel speedily and soon and say, Amen. Um, may his great name be blessed forever and to all eternity, blessed and praised, glorified and exalted, extolled and honored, Adored and lauded be the name of the Holy One, blessed be He. Beyond all the blessings and hymns, praises and consolations that are ever spoken in the world, and say, Amen. May there be abundant peace from, hev from heaven and life for us and for all Israel, say, Amen. Who creates peace in His celestial heights, may He create peace for us in all Israel, and say, Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Um, and here's um, Ruth Bader Ginsburg from Bio. There we go. So um, the last little part of this lesson um, is looking at. Uh, did I put my stylus away? I don't, oh, there it is. Um, I don't know if I need it, but. Um, looking at the, the last part of the lesson, which, um, I guess I'll 
to wait. Uh, we looked at what's the what's the problem with human nature? If humans are created in the image of God, that means we're good because God is good. But when we look around the world, it kind of mess. It's like messed up. So then that begs the question: Well, what is wrong with the world? And the Christian answer to the question is that when we fell from grace, we damaged our human nature. We were made in the image and likeness of God, but the fall from grace left us permanently damaged. But God, because he is good and loving, didn't um, deign to leave us in this state. Um, and he sent Christ um, to redeem us. So God doesn't just like fix us or patch us up. It's not like he put a Band-Aid over original sin. Um, he sends Christ to um, kind of remake us and bring us back to the likeness of God. Um, and he doesn't just like start over. I, I always wonder like, why didn't God just like start over and like put dolphins in charge? Because they're such cool animals. Like maybe they would have done a better job than humans. Um, so the incarnation, in the incarnation, God restores and elevates the window. Remember how we talked about the window is like, um, the body is like the window through which the soul the soul shines. Um, and he, he, he increases its beauty and luminosity um, because when God becomes man in Jesus Christ, he elevates our, our the dignity we already had as humans um, to a whole new level. And that's what was, they were talking about in GS 22, uh, which we'll look at in a minute. So, Um, so Jesus Christ reveals the divine love in and through the actions of his human body. And so again, we see that, that, um, the, the importance of, of the body in Christian thought and, um, you know, on the cross, he reveals his love by we, by will, being willing to die for us, um, and in redeem us and, uh, in, oh, sorry. I bought a little stand for my computer, so I, the, it's up higher, so I'm not constantly looking down. Um, where did I put my Bible? So in Philippians, let me find it. I, it's, it's Philippians um, 2, I think 6 through 10. Let me, Philippians. Sorry, I... I had the page marked and then I moved it to look at something else. Ah, poodles. There you are. Okay. So in Philippians, it's 6 through 11, actually. Um, this is called the Kenotic Hem. Uh, and in, it's probably one of the most ancient hymns in the church. And Paul records it here in his letter to the Philippians. Um, but when it talks about Jesus emptying himself, the Greek word for that is kenosis. And so Paul writes, um, Who, though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be grasped. And that word grasped, that's what Adam and Eve do. They grasp at God's nature even though we were made to have human nature and even though we shared in god's divine life that wasn't enough for them they were grasping but here it says that jesus did not um regard equality with god as something to be grasped rather he emptied himself taking the form of a slave coming in human likeness and found in human appearance he humbled himself becoming obedient to death even death on a cross because of this, God greatly exalted him and bestowed him on every name that is above every name, and that is the name of Jesus, that every, at the name of Jesus every knee should bend, those in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. So Jesus takes on the fullness of our humanity in all things except for sin, and then he empties himself out on the cross. Like, actually kind of quite literally because as he's dying on the cross he's also bleeding out from all the um torture he suffered and he probably ended up dying of asphyxiation at the end but um when he pours out his blood for us on the cross uh that allows us to take on 
and restore that likeness of God that had been lost after the fall. Um, so we, so he offers us like the solution to the problem in the song, where is the love? The solution is, is Jesus, grace that we get from Jesus Christ. Um, so uh, Jesus' life is like a mirror that finally shows the full truth of human nature. Um, sin blurs and, whoops, sin blurs, ah, blurred and dulled the image. So again, you know, using that metaphor of uh, like the soul as a light shining through glass. Um, the fall from grace, we're still in the image of God, but we sort of fell out of his likeness. We stopped being like God because of the effects of sin. And remember, a, the nature of a human being is we're a rational animal. And so part of human nature is that we have reason and will. And what happened as a result of the fall is the will became weak and our reason became dark. Because the point of reason and will tell us what the good is or what truth is. And um, the will moves us toward it. But when we fell from grace, our intellect became dark. So sometimes we mistaken things that, for, that are, we think they're good, but they're really not. A, a prime example of that is like drugs. You know, nobody takes drugs because they're like, yeah, I want to destroy my body and become an addict. No, you take drugs because you want that feeling. It makes you feel good. It makes you stop worrying about your problems. Um, and so, you know, we, we mistake things that are bad for us as good for us. And then our wills are weak. You know, it's hard for us to say no. Um, but it's through Christ, the grace we receive from Christ, that we can overcome um, the darkened intellect and the weak will. Um, as it says here, Christ, in Christ, humanity shines in all its radiance, totally and completely alive in the presence of God. Um, Jesus Christ shows, it what, shows us what it means to be fully human. Um, and, and they talk about that in GS22 about how um, it's through Christ that we become free from sin. And that's what real freedom is. Um, so, yeah, so it's, yeah, I said that. So his grace enables us to reach our fulfillment or our telos um, to, to have our true happiness. Um, yeah. Okay. I think I already said that. Um, all right. So what I want to do now. So what we'll do now is find your, um, you're going to find your, your GS 22 reading. What did we, oh, it's a seminar. Okay. So I'm not very good. I haven't done very many seminars. It's kind of weird to do it on zoom, but what I thought we would do is, um, there is a place for you to take notes. Uh, I always enjoy the seminars just because when I hear what other people, how they interpreted the text, it's always like, wow, I didn't even think of that. So you can take some notes on anything anybody says that you find edifying. And then um, before the end of class, I'll give you time to upload them to Schoology. But I'll put you in your breakout rooms um, so that you can can kind of discuss it in a small group. It's a little bit easier. And I'll come in and check in on every breakout room to see um, what you guys are talking about and um, kind of get your ideas. And then um, maybe as a large group, we can have um, each breakout room sort of maybe just summarize what, um, if you had to summarize, the the message of gs22 in one sentence like what would it be how would you say like why is this important oh, oh okay anna got kicked out okay yeah um people have been having trouble today um the the 
you, did you guys know who this patron saint of the internet is? It's Saint Isidore of Seville. Um, Cause he was, he made some of the first encyclopedias. And so when they were thinking of a patron saint of the internet, they thought like the internet is a collection of knowledge. Um, <laughs> and now I don't know, it's a collection of knowledge and also nonsense, but um, when, they were looking for a patron saint of the internet. They thought of St. Isidore of Seville because he made some of the first encyclopedias. So he is the patron saint of the internet. Um, okay, so let me, er, let me send you to your breakout rooms. What time is it? It's 11.16 when we get out at noon. So we have plenty of time. Okay, so breakout rooms. I was just saying, we were talking about um, the line where it said um, Jesus died for not only just like Christians, but like every good person. Yeah. What? So, um, yeah, I think that I love that about GS22. What do you guys think? Yeah, I thought that was really interesting. <laughs> yeah. Anybody else? Sorry, I know I just pop in here. It's like now it's totally awkward. I'm like, lady, you made it awkward. Um, let's see. So, let me look at the questions I gave you. Um, you guys were talking, yeah, that that grace is working in the hearts of all people because Christ dies for everybody, not just Christians. Sometimes we forget that. Um, but this actually kind of goes back to that idea of the telos of the human person is happiness. And our total fulfillment comes from having been connected to God. And so Jesus is the bridge between sin and death and us and God. So um, ultimately, if this is the telos of all human beings um, in some way known only to God himself, uh, you know, everyone's going to be saved and everyone who's saved will ultimately be saved through Jesus, even if they didn't even know it. Um, what about number six? What did you guys think about Romans 8, 1 through 27? Anybody want to share some of your thoughts? I thought it was really interesting let me read my response okay uh, so like um working through the spirit rather than flesh i thought was interesting like like not caring about material things i was thinking of like caring about like your mind and like learning new things and i thought that was a really good um like message that i haven't thought about a lot yeah it's interesting because in christianity um we try to avoid a dichotomy between the spirit and the flesh. That's kind of a, a Greek idea from, from like Plato, but Aristotle um, taught hylomorphism. And so Thomas Aquinas picks up this idea from Aristotle that we were meant to be a body soul composite. Um, however, original sin damages, um, you know, kind of damaged us. Um, and that's what, what Christ does. He restores that. Um, but still, there is, there is, a, you still get a hint of that kind of dichotomy in Paul a little bit, um, you know, between the spirit and the, and the flesh. Um, anybody else, other thoughts on uh, Romans 8? Um, I just like that, even though it says, like, we're, like, sinners, that Jesus is, like, his spirit is, is dwelled within us. Yeah, it's a pretty amazing thought. I Sometimes I think we forget how amazing that is, that when you, if, if you guys were baptized, at that moment, um, the Holy Spirit and God's grace started to dwell within your, within your heart. And um, when I taught sacraments, I'd always tell the students, it's like 
God tattoos your soul and you can't wipe it off. It doesn't matter how bad you sin. It doesn't matter how far you go from God. Once you've got that grace of baptism, that sanctifying grace, it's, you know, it's there forever. Um, and you always have a home to come back to. Like once you're Catholic, you're always Catholic and you can always come home. Um, just like the prodigal son. Uh, anyone else? Other things? Sarah or Madeline? Do you go by Ma Maddie? Madeline or just Madeline? Um, either is fine. I don't really mind either. Okay. Um, I had these students when I taught down at Rosary Academy in Fullerton. They were the Aguirres. And one was named USA in, like, not United States of America. It was just USA, the letters. And then the other sister was named California. And then the one I had was Cherry. <laughs> and I'm like, why didn't they keep with the theme, you know? It was USA, California, and then Cherry, and Geary. I'll never forget her. Um, sorry, I digress. <laughs> <laughs> no, they're kind of silly that. names. <laughs> Yeah, I think I, I, they're actually kind of inspiring because the their parents are Mexican immigrants and they were so yeah. happy to be in the United States that they named their kids that. And I was like, that, you know, that's really inspiring. Um, I don't know. Any other thoughts or questions? Um, I wanted to talk about the effect on human nature like the mm -hmm. incarnation number three like i didn't really know what to say about that yeah um well one of the important points that they they make is that it restores the divine likeness which was tr um kind of disfigured by the fall so when when we fell from grace we still we still remain in god's image but we became unlike god because we instead of being turned to the good now we're kind of turned to to the bad and that was a lasting effect of the fall and um what god's grace does and what the incarnation does is since jesus is fully human you have the divine son of god the divine logos he takes on the fullness of human nature so when jesus became um, a human being at the fullness of time it wasn't like he stopped being god and it wasn't like his divine nature destroyed his the human nature he remains fully human while remaining fully divine which is a strange concept because that means he has two natures whereas we only have one so it's really hard for us to understand what that would be like but when he takes on our human nature he kind of um in the Eastern Church, they say we sort of become deified, and he raises us up at, out of that fallen state because he represents all of us on the cross. And so, the incarnation, um, in the incarnation, as it said in in the in the paragraph, he completely unites himself to us, and by doing that, he corrects the damage um, to human nature that happened during the fall. Um, the only thing is, so when we receive sanctifying grace when we're baptized, like if you imagine, let me see, can I, where's that thingamajigger? Hang on, I don't, where did it go? Ah, I don't know where my pen thing went. Maybe I can't use it because I'm not in, I don't know where it went. But anyway, can I? I don't. Mm, mm, mm. Am I sharing my screen? I didn't think I was. Here, let me do this. So, yeah, that works. So, if you imagine, like, original sin, if you imagine your soul, um, original sin did this damage to our souls. And so, what grace, sanctifying grace does is imagine it's like, it stitches it up like those are like sutures. But um, even though sanctifying grace restores us to the likeness of God, there's still a scar there. And um, that scar is what we call concupiscence. I don't think I spelled that right. It's a weird word. Um, but concupiscence is a tendency to sin. 
So through God's grace, we can overcome um, original sin. However, we're still, the will is still weak. Um, so we still, if you if you've ever wondered why you feel that feeling, like somebody tells you no, and the first thing you think is like, I want to do it. Or you're like, whatever your vices are, like if it's um, uh, like, I don't know, candy or anything you struggle with, like that feeling of like wanting to do something and you know, you don't, you know, you shouldn't do it, but you still want to do it. That feeling is like concupiscence. It, it still remains even after the graces we receive through the sacraments. But if we activate God's grace, we can overcome concupiscence. But um, without the grace of God, we we wouldn't be able to overcome it. That, and that's why we need Jesus, because he he's the one through his grace that stitches up this wound in the human in the human soul. Um, that's the that's my favorite metaphor for it. But um, let me let's see. So let me go check. What I don't know what I'm doing. There we go. So let me go check on the other breakout rooms. Well, any other questions while I'm here? Does that help? Awesome. Let me go check on the other rooms. Okay. Hi. Hi. Hey, how's it going? Hi. Whoa, oh, my lights just came back on. How are you guys doing? Good? So let's see, let me, which question, how about number four, um, GS22 says, through his death and resurrection, Jesus blazed a trail for us to follow. I thought that was kind of a neat image. Um, given what you learned about Jesus' Paschal mystery in your previous theology classes, how would you describe the trail that Jesus has blazed in your own words? Um, in other words, in what way do life and death take on new meaning in light of the incarnation and resurrection? What'd you guys put? Or how would you describe the trail Jesus blazes for us? Anybody? We could do a different one. How about, uh, how about number six? Um, what what kind of stuck out for you about Romans eight? Um, I kind of just wrote about how, um, like how we're flesh and spirit, but it like our future will affect which one we focus on. So when we focus on just the flesh, it's just like human issues, and it's just our thinking doesn't go beyond that. But when we focus on spirit, we focus more on the divine issues, and it will help us like go further. Yeah. Yeah, that's interesting. Um, it kind of, it reminds me of the whole situation a little bit with the, the COVID. We're really, really concerned about our bodies because the COVID's a threat, um, a threat to the flesh. The disease can kill our bodies, but, um, you know, what effect is it having on the soul? Like the fact that, you know, for the longest time we couldn't go to mass, we couldn't be with other people. Um, I just, for some reason, the way you said it, I just started thinking about like that idea of, of, of how the quarantine, we're so concerned with, with protecting the flesh. What happens to our souls? Yeah. I don't know. That's just, I don't know. I just started thinking of that. Anybody else? Other thoughts on, um, Romans eight, anything that stood out? I know it's weird. It's awkward. It'd be easier for, I think, I think it'd be easier for you in the classroom. Um, did you guys have any questions about any of the stuff you read in GS22? No? Um, what, well, let's see. Was there anything else? Um, okay. Let me go check on another group. If you have any questions, let me know. Okay. 
Hi, how's it going? Good. 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 Oh, you got like broke up there. Um, so let's see. Did you? I guess I should ask you first. Do you guys have any questions about GS twenty two? No. Um, let's see. Let me ask you about. Oh, I think I have. I forgot number two there. So one of my favorite lines from this document is in number one, Jesus worked with human hands. He thought with a human mind, acted by a human choice and loved with a human heart. Born of the Virgin Mary, he has truly been made um, one of us, like us in all things except sin. So um, number two was, you know, considering that line above, how does knowing this change the way you view yourself? Um, would anyone like to share what you put? Um, I said that knowing knowing this makes me appreciate and take care of like my life and my body so much more because I know that Jesus has graced this earth in human form and and that just kind of shows us that we should take care of ourselves because we're special and made in the image of God. So yeah. we have to, yeah. Yeah. Anyone else? No. Yeah, I think, um, yeah, we see we are special. And sometimes I think we forget that. It's really easy um, to be down on ourselves. And then, also, in the culture today, sometimes I think we focus so much on science. We focus so much on materialism, which is focusing on the material um, aspect of life. We forget um, that we have this mind and this soul and this beautiful thing. Um, and, and even our humanity, we can be terrible to each other, but Christ took on that humanity, and by taking it on, and, and when he rises from the dead, it's not like he stops being human. He takes our humanity into heaven with him and sort of elevates, elevates our humanity to a level that's almost even better than before the fall. Because, like, there's, like, there's two human bodies, at least, up in heaven, Mary and Jesus. And then I think Enoch and maybe Elijah, too. But, yeah, it's, like, kind of kind of wild I, I think sometimes I think we don't really appreciate some of the beauty of the the Christian faith because we especially for a Catholic school we talk about it so much it gets kind of um blase um let's see uh da, 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 da. how about the one for um number six Romans eight um what do you guys make of it? Anything in particular stand out? I said it talks about the redemption of like humankind and how like we are made in the image of God. Yeah. Yeah, and we become the adopted children of the Father and they had that last line that we can cry out in the spirit, Abba, Father, that we would have, you know, it, it, to be able to call God dad. That's crazy. Um, anybody else thoughts on Romans 8? Anybody? No. Well, I, another thing I noticed, it, it talks a, a couple times about, like Paul in Romans 8 said that if we suffer with Christ, we'll be glorified with him as well. So our suffering isn't in vain. And they also mentioned, where was it? Um, about the hope. I, oh, and um, the trail that Christ blazed for us. I talked about in destroying death by his death, Jesus blazes a trail that ultimately, ultimately ends in victory um, no matter what struggles we face in life. And again, and it talks about we have this hope um, 
this this hope that ultimately no matter what happens it's going to end in a victory for us and i think that's an, a nice perspective especially in this time of dealing with the quarantine that for the christian the end of my story isn't going to be the death of my body um you know it's going to be that i will eventually be resurrected with christ at the end of time um, and i think that's a nice thing to remember because um, it, it, we're going through a hard time, but uh, Christ united himself in our suffering, and he'll ultimately um, glorify us. So, I don't know. I thought that was kind of cool. All right. So, no questions? All right. Well, let me go check on the other groups. Um, I went to one. This is three. Okay. Hi. How, how's it going? Hi, it's going well. Good. So did you, I guess first, did you have any questions about any of the the questions that you had to answer? I don't think so. No. Um, which one intrigued you the most? Let's see. Oh, I think maybe number five about the incarnation that it's not, well, okay, yeah, number five, but that it's important for all people, not just Christians. Yeah. Um, what'd you make of it? Well, I said, okay, so I took a quote from the passage and mm -hmm. I talked about that. And it was the one that Christ died for all men. And since the ultimate vocation of man, uh-oh, hold on, my thing disappeared. Well, okay, it was that quote. Yeah. And I think that, that was important because it relates to all of society and not just one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and, and this kind of gets to the idea of our telos, because our vocation, you know, what is the telos of humankind? It's, it's happiness. Mm -hmm. And since happiness will ultimately be found in God and the beatific vision, uh, Christ dies for everybody. And Christ's grace is open to everybody. So anyone who's saved will ultimately be saved by Christ's grace, even if they don't know it. Um, and even if we don't know how that works, it's one of the mysteries of God. But yeah, the incarnation, when Jesus dies, he dies for everybody. Because one of the things about Christianity is we tend to be very exclusive. Like there's just one way, you know, and you got to do it our way or the highway. But I like that in GS25, they remind us that Christ's grace is working in everybody in ways that we don't understand, but it gives us hope that ultimately everyone will be saved because that's that was the mission of Jesus and that's our sort of goal in life is, is to be with God. Yeah, I like that too. Um, anybody else, other ones that you found interesting or are lines or quotes? Anyone else? I was gonna say number five was interesting as well. But I also think four is interesting, how, like, it's sort of like a cycle, because, like, life and death is, like, you, you're born, and then, you like, the end is when you die. So I found that one interesting as well. Yeah. Yeah, and I, I like, they had mentioned, um, in, in destroying death by his death, Jesus blazes a trail that ultimately ends in victory, um, no matter the struggles we face in life. And when I was reading that, I kind of thought about the whole COVID situation um, and the idea that, that ultimately um, we have this hope that the end of my story um, is that I will be resurrected with Christ. So like kind of if we look at the world just like, just from the material perspective, and we don't look at the spirit and the soul. It, I mean, if you're looking at COVID and in the, in the, the end of your story is you died of COVID, I mean, that would be heartbreaking. But for Christians, we know that the end of, like they just said the other day, 200,000 Americans died. And that's like, that's insane. Um, but the end of their story isn't that they just, died and are going to rot in a tomb, right? It's that they will ultimately um, be resurrected. And, and it's sort of a kind of, I mean, when you're in this situation, it can se sort of seem hollow, but at the same time, it, it gives us tremendous hope. Um, 
And that, that's the, that's the thing. Hope is different. Like happiness is different from joy. And like hope is, is when you have confidence in the truth of God and what's going to happen in our future. Um, and so hope like joy never goes away. It's not like just a, a momentary feeling. It's a grace we get from God. I know they mentioned that too in there. I like that. I, I like thinking about hope because I'm, I'm naturally pessimistic. Yeah. It says here, what is it? But likened with the Paschal mystery and pattered on the dying Christ, he will hasten forward to resurrection in the strength, which comes from hope. Yeah. I like that, man. That's, that's solid. Yeah, I, I should like put that on my mirror or something because I'm a pessimist and I always think everything's going to go wrong. Like, how can you be a pessimist and a Christian at the same time? All right. Any other questions or comments? No. All right. Let me check on our, jeez, oh, almost time to go. Let me check on my last group. I still have one more group. Hey, how's it going? Am I on? Yeah. How's it going? Um, we finished our seminar. Yeah. Um, which question did you guys find the most interesting or which part of the document? Um, I really liked number three. Number three. Okay. Why'd you like it? Um, I don't, it kind of, I don't know. I kind of just had time to like reflect on the passage, I think, mm -hmm. and like pick out what I thought like the meaning of the passage was. Mm -hmm. Um, what'd you write? Um, so the question was, what is the effect of the incarnation on human nature? Um, I said that Jesus understands what it's like to be human and therefore we can relate to him. Yeah. Yeah. I, I love that idea that he worked with human hands, thought with the human mind, acted with, um, by human choice, loved with a human heart. Like he understands everything we go through because he went through everything except for sin. Um, and, and he reveals to us that's our true nature. Like sometimes students will ask me, well, if Jesus didn't sin, that means he's not really human because they're defining human nature as sinful. But actually Jesus came to show us that our real nature was to be free from sin. Um, mm -hmm. And yeah, it's, it's a beautiful thing to think about. Anybody else, other, other things you found interesting uh yeah i agree with alexis um i like the middle of it where it's talking about um how jesus like had human nature and how like because he was human he can kind of relate to us mm -hmm. yeah and we can relate to him and like what he did is like and the way he lived is like attainable for us yeah yeah that's yeah that's the thing um Sometimes as Christians, because we do focus on sin so much and our fallen nature, maybe we could be too negative. I like how you said it's attainable for us. Let me put that down. Is that, who was that? Was that Lindsay? That was me, yeah. It's attainable. Attainable. I don't think I spelled it right. For us. I like the way you said that. I like doing these seminars. I like, you get to hear, some of you guys have really lovely um, ways of putting things. Uh, all right, well, we don't have much time. Let's, let, let's all um, go back to the big room. Let's see. Oh, I don't want to leave the meeting. Leave breakout room.
<laughs> okay, so um, I guess just one final thought before we close. Remember, there's um, make sure to put this on um, Schoology, and I'll grade them over the weekend. Um, and double check that you have all your assignments turned in as well, because um, we have to post quarter grades in like two weeks, I think. And um, there's no homework, but you could start looking at the stuff for the test if you want to. In next class, we'll spend the whole time um, brainstorming on outlines for the for the test. And then um, the other class next week, um, we'll just pray and then you'll have time to either work on your test or get help or do whatever you need to do. So, um, but I was thinking, um, where did I put it in my notes? I was, I was thinking like Paul kept talking about um, the idea that it's, it, Jesus frees us from sin. And let me put, whoops. Um, let me find something I can write with. Okay. So I was thinking as I was reading Romans, this kind of brings everything all in a big circle. So we started off looking at like happiness. And we found that telos is, um, our telos is sort of um, our, our purpose, right? And um, the t our telos is sort of, we could find out, you know, our telos by looking at the nature of things. And so we know that the ultimate telos of the human being is happiness. So, you know, what what is the purpose of humans? Our purpose is to ultimately, um, our end is to be happy. And we learned that there's different four levels of happiness and they're all important, but true satisfaction and ultimate satisfaction and ultimate peace and, and joy comes from level four, which is being connected um, to God or the ultimate cause. Uh, and when Paul talks about being free, he mentions this in relation to sin. And what sin did was it made us slaves. And, and this is something that the culture today just doesn't seem to get. Our culture seems to treat free will, which is an aspect of human nature. Um, instead of understanding our ability to choose as um, ability to choose for the good, ability to choose for that which is good for human nature, people often see freedom just as license. License is where you just do whatever you want. But again, in the same way that you can't just put like sugar in a gas tank and think your car is going to run, um, we can't just do whatever we want to make ourselves happy because ultimately um, we were we were made for fulfillment with God. And it's when we, it's when we act according to that nature that we are truly free and truly happy. Um, and so everything is sort of all, all coming together at the end here. And we thought um, GS 22 was a good way to end because it kind of brings, brings everything together. And that's what we're going to be looking at um, the rest of the uh, at least the rest of the semester, we'll be looking at the idea of how the moral life, the whole purpose of it is to safeguard our happiness. And um, again, people usually, when they think about morality, they, they tend to think about it as being rules or being about saying no. Um, but the entire reason we say no to, you know, X or Y or Z is because we're saying yes to something so much better. Um, we're saying yes to the freedom that comes um, from living the moral life. Because um, think about it: if like you're the most free when you're when you when you're doing 
what you're supposed to be doing, right? Like, um, it, well, there's lots of analogies and we could talk about it when we review for the test, but, um, yeah. So I don't know. I was just trying to tie everything together. Let me sit down and think about that over the weekend. Um, but in any case, uh, that's stop. There we go. Um, okay, so just make sure you put those on Schoology. Double check that you turned everything in, because um, again, we'll be posting grades. It's on the calendar. It's like next week or something. So um, have a good weekend. Enjoy your day off tomorrow, and I'll see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Hi, Mrs. Regan. Bye.